Hi everybody, welcome to the Whistling Watts Workshop. Today we're looking at the Dynamax E fan converted by Fred Baldwin of Indiana. It's actually used a Noi 1527 3D motor to replace what would normally have been the internal combustion ducted fan device such as an OS91 or a Rossi that was traditionally used in these units. And most of these units would produce somewhere between 11 or 12 pounds of thrust depending who you spoke to and what day it was. Um, but we're interested in seeing how it's going to work with electric power. Um, what we've done for the test is actually produce a full fan swept area inlet which has a diameter of 104 millimeters and in there a center body to maintain the FSA um, that's fan swept area the center body also contains the RPM sensor for the Eagle Tree unit which I've switched to the optical device um, unfortunately the way I've actually created it we seem to have an error up to about 28,000 RPM where it's doubling up um, use a reflective strip and uh, it causes that error but during the test when you see it drop from about 28,000 down to 13 from 13 onwards you're actually getting the true RPM before then if you actually divide the figure by 2 um, so it's basically half the reading um, you'll get the true reading at uh, the lower watt levels here we have our 25C EVO pack um, working well, I think it's still got some more to give a bit more exercise is actually required but it's maintaining and uh, doing credit to itself. Um, here we have our environment meter. What we're recording at the moment in temperature is 21 degrees centigrade which is uh, just uh, nearly 71 degrees Fahrenheit and we have a relative humidity of 62% uh, which is quite high, it's just rained quite heavily here. Um, during the test you'll see this meter pop in every now and again um, also recalls decibels this particular workshop is only 8 by 10 and uh, the noises bounce off all the walls we've got mechanical noise and that but what I've noticed by testing it is that the more RPMs you've got in there um, it seems to come on the pipe and it really starts sounding very sweet it actually seems to actually go quieter so when you see the meter pop in you'll notice the difference between its uh, lower watt range sound and the higher watt range sound. There we have our Eagle Tree system set up with the um, um, sensor for the thrust. Uh, what I've actually managed to do is uh, run a cable to another unit which I've taken apart. In actual fact I blew it up trying to uh, work out how long that cable should be so it doesn't spoil the calibration and also doesn't actually overload the sensor and uh, took a couple out while I was figuring that one out. During the test you'll see me tap on the uh, um, the the thrust and then the watts. What I'm doing there is giving an indication of the sort of values I was getting when I was running this unit on 10S which was working out a little over 12 pounds in thrust and um, that's pretty much what you'd be getting on your OS91. So on the 10S pack it's going to be quieter, you haven't got the big cylinder head in the way and um, you pretty much bolt this into your current uh, 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 Dynamax powered model get rid of the greasy Slimer engine in there and, and go electric. On the back here we have the uh, Eagle Tree probe which um, the Spito tube was actually engineered by the RCJI editor John Wright. If I swivel it slightly to the left we're getting a 5 to 7 mile an hour drop in the RPM readings. Swivel so it to the right towards the outer edge, it increases by approximately the same proportion. So there is a pretty good average about what's going on. In the back there, uh, you'll see Fred's unit and uh, really nice the engine heat sink. There is the uh, cause of the wire and the temperature gauge for the Eagle Tree unit runs up there, actually touches the coils at the back of the motor so the temperature reading we're getting is actually a very good one so um, yes castle control 110 works very well with this unit and I've got that set at the very lowest timing the highest timing um, didn't really make any difference standard timing um, 
again it's slightly more thrust but uh, it peaked early and start to draw more amps so the lowest timing on there uh, low advance seems to be where you need to set this device so now we're going to run the test Okay, we're getting ready for test number six, uh, setting everything up, uh, just connecting the Thunder Power 12S pack, sorry not Thunder Power 12S pack, the Flight Power 12S pack, um, an average surface temperature on the 12S pack at around about 34 degrees because I've pre-warmed it, connecting it now, hate that spark. Reading the pack temperature of 50 volts, actually a bit higher than that. Um, it's calibrated low at this end to be more or less right at the top end. You get the edit in this. Anyways, every now and then you get another meter that pops in. Uh, this will be the decibel meter. It's only an 8 foot by 10 foot workshop, everything's loud in here. We'll stroll it around 2000 watts for about 30 seconds, then open up all the taps. Here we go. We're going to leave it ticking along for a little while while uh, we get some cooling down. Thanks for watching.